What are your biggest concerns here with this Chrome situation? Well, Chrome is now the most popular desktop browser, which means a lot of people are doing very sensitive browsing with it. In the olden days, meaning a couple of weeks ago, you could use Chrome just as a browser without signing into Google. And now the requirement is that every time you use Chrome and you log into Google, any Google property like Gmail, Chrome is going to know who you are. It's going to be signed in from that point on. Brad, you know, at, some, at what point do we say Google has taken this too far? Google has taken this a step too far. Again. Well, I mean, I think Google had a, you know, had a had a rational response to Matthew's blog post, right? They said that Chrome, you know, is used on computers that are shared, that there's a lot of confusion, that customers have been complaining, that maybe they, they log on uh, to their Gmail and then, um, you know, other people's information is getting synced with their account. But what Matthew, I think, really identified is the way in which Google is acting without a lot of transparency, without a lot of context for all the privacy questions this company has been facing from, you know, kids using YouTube and having their data shared uh, to Google quiet. Uh, you know, using information from MasterCard to serve ads, ads to customers based on what they bought online. Um, you know, Google is operating in an era with a lot more transparency and scrutiny. And if they're going to make a move like this with a, a franchise like Chrome, they need to be more above board. Matthew, you talk about how Google is treating trust as if it's a renewable resource. But in a way, though, is it? Because users have kept coming back, even as Google has violated privacy over and over again. I mean, this is certainly not the first and probably not the last time we're going to be talking about this. Well, I mean, I think that Google has actually acquired a very good reputation with respect to privacy, and they've done that, you know, despite the fact that we all know Google collects a lot of data, their security is excellent, and they've managed to stay out of trouble. They don't um, get caught, for example, the way Facebook has, changing your settings without your consent, and they don't get caught having your data breached. So they've done a very good job. So whether they're collecting your data or not, they've, they've kept people from noticing that. And this kind of change with Chrome, I think, is probably the first time they've really blown it on that front. Meantime, Brad, there was an empty chair for Google at uh, these hearings a couple of weeks ago. Sheryl Sandberg, Jack Dorsey showed up. Uh, Google would not send its CEO, did not send uh, Larry Page, of course, CEO of Alphabet. Um, what do you expect to see in the hearings coming up this week? Yeah, not not a lot. I mean, all, all the companies are sending either a chief privacy offer, officer or an associate general counsel. We're going to get, I think, as the New York Times pointed out this morning, very legalistic answers to a lot of the questions that the uh, the Commerce Committee is going to have about, you know, opt-in and opt-out and anonymized data. These are answers we've heard before from, from top executives who, had, who have testified before Congress. And what we really yet to or yet to get is, you know, how these businesses work, how they are using the data they collect from us, sometimes without our consent, uh, to inform the kinds of services they provide to us and to advertisers. And that's the way that these services have really been exploited. And I think Congress, you know, we're at the beginning maybe of pressing the companies on this issue, but I don't think we're going to get much this week. Matthew, you make the point that these companies know what they're doing. Google didn't do this by accident. So what do you want these lawmakers to ask these companies? Well, you know, I'd like to live in a world where companies like Google could self-regulate and we wouldn't have to worry about privacy concerns. But at the end of the day, we don't live in that world and we need to do something about it. Europe has taken a very proactive approach to privacy, which I think is promising. And I hope that, you know, once that experiment's been played out in Europe, we'll start to see the best parts of it adopted here in the U.S. Brad, we haven't talked about Amazon and, you know, all of the devices unveiled last week, the privacy issues associated with, uh, they didn't with bring this. Up. Right. Well, they didn't bring up and, and, and well, now we are. Right. But, you know, we're talking about 70 new devices, right. you know, that are you know, listening to us in our cars, you know, Amazon everywhere, as we discussed. Do you think that's something that Amazon has to further explain? Well, I mean, I think that they view these events as speaking directly to customers, almost like, you know, live advertisements. And I don't think they think that this is an issue for their customers. You know, this is an issue for politicians, um, you know, for regulators, for the media. Um, and so, yes, they've got some stuff to explain. There have been some major you know, mistakes Major with Alexa mistakes. transferring live conversations of customers to somebody in their address book being being kind of the big one. But um, you know what they what they say is that Alexa is not you know always listening and the in information is safeguarded and used to provide people with more accurate responses and better services. So um, you know, look, I think you know, like Google, Amazon has done a pretty good job with respect to customer privacy. But as Alexa becomes more prominent, more ingrained. In, in everyday life, then yes, these are great questions to ask.